Hey guys, this is Drew with the Kusha Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, we went to Dickie Parsley's house, bought a whole bunch of coins. Um, it's going to be an exciting video, a lot of interesting coins to show you, and a few th words to say as well. Uh, this is a beautiful dog named Willow, and uh, yeah, you're welcome. Let's get this video started. So this is not coin related, but this really does apply to you um, either in your personal life or in your business. Um, if you are being mistreated by anybody or uh, someone's doing things that you don't agree with, uh, I think the best thing to do sometimes is just stand up for yourself, tell people how you feel, um, and get, just get that off your chest. Um, it has nothing to do with Dickie or anybody else, no one in the coin space. It was just something that uh, happened this weekend. And so, like I said, though, what I would advise you guys is that if you feel like you're being mistreated or someone's, you know, giving you a cold shoulder, stick up for yourself um, and people will respect you more because you'll have conviction enough to just show people that you're worth something, that you need to be valued as a person um, and that we all have things in common and all have common interests and all are really good people at the end of the day and someone that, you know, if you are you know, trying to understand people, what I would say is meet everybody, be kind to them, endorse whatever they want to do, help them in any way that you can, um, because that's really how the world gets better, that's how we get better as people, and that's kind of how you grow your connections and how you um, just make your way out through the world. But now enough of me rambling, uh, let's talk about this video. So if you guys don't know who Dickie is, uh, Dickie Parsley is a guy that we met at the Orange Show. Uh, you guys uh, saw him with an interview, and then after that, he kind of gave us our, some information, and he said, if you guys ever want to come by, uh, just just let me know a day in advance. So we didn't have a show this weekend. We gave him a call, and he, he let us you know come to his house, buy a few coins. Uh, he actually owns a farm and feed store uh, in Louisiana, and he's a really interesting entrepreneur, uh, does a lot of things with his hands and just knows a lot of people, is a very humble guy. Um, but yeah, just very thankful for Dickie. He's a really cool guy. I wanted to show you guys some coins and uh, yeah, you'll enjoy them a lot. Where do we start with all of this? Look at this stuff. Wow. Well, let's start on the raw section for you guys real quick. Got a lot of choice coins here. You guys have been buying the raw stuff like crazy. Wanted to give you guys an opportunity to take a look at this stuff. Pick up this coin first here. This is an 1846 seated quarter. I don't see much circulation on this coin at all. I think I might have a shot at Mint State actually. Dickie wrote Mint State 64 on the coin, but I don't think that's you know entirely true just because of that luster. But maybe an AU coin, maybe an MS coin on the edge of that. But super neat piece. Had to pay up for something like this, but super original. And uh, gosh, when I saw it in hand, I'm like, man, I have to buy this no matter what. Dickie's such a cool guy, and he's been holding on to that for a while, and it was so thankful, I'm so thankful to be able to look at Dickie's coins. Um, take a look at this Mercury Dime, this 1944S. Kind of dark, but does have some kind of appealing look to it. A little bit of color, which I'm excited about. You know, buying a little bit more modern coins does get, give you, uh, you know, some interesting kind of changes, especially when you buy stuff with toning like I was talking about in previous videos. So if you're gonna buy something kind of new age like this, there's so many of them out there that you're really just gonna to wanna to buy one that has a little bit of character to it. And uh, Dickie did not let us down on that coin. Uh, going back to some seated stuff here, 1858 quarter. Uh, you know, it does have some, I think, old cleaning on that, but you can expect that on many of these older coins here. Um, and some more two cent pieces. This one has a nice chocolate brown to it. No issues on the coin, no rim dings, nothing of, of that sort. And, you know, I, like I said, I just can't keep this cool stuff in, in stock. Here's one of my favorite raw coins of the batch. Not sure if I'm going to sell this one yet. This is an 1840 uh, seated half dollar. I love how the date's kind of intricate on the bottom there, a little bit smaller than most. But when you actually flip it over and take a look at the mint mark, it's a very small O. And there's actually only six very small O's at PCGS that are known to exist. So I might send this one in with a few other coins that I've been waiting to send in and see what comes what it comes back at. There's just not many of these around, and this one looks super original. I think this one might be able to cack um, when it comes back. So let me know what your guys' thoughts are on this coin down below. I'd be interested to know. 
another CC dime. Can't go wrong with this beauty here. Uh, it has some kind of nice dark fields and the details really do pop out. That's kind of how I base most of my coin, my raw coin buys off of. You can just see the originality and the contrast. And it's just that circulated, what they call it circulated cameo sometimes, which is kind of cool. Got a few Indian head scents. We're going to start off with a better date here, 1908S. I think it's a VF, kind of XF almost. And it does have Liberty still on there. The only problem on the coin is that little carbon spot you can see to the bottom left. But overall, a nice, wholesome, better date, especially if you're trying to fill an Indian head scent album. Most of these 1908S's and 9S's are all going to be in holders, even if they're extremely low grade. So that's just something of convenience for you guys if you're trying to fill an album and don't want to crack a holder and do all the extra stuff. And sometimes you just have to pay a premium for people to put it in plastic for you. We just showed a few coins off. Uh, we wanted to take a break and ask you guys, are you enjoying this video? If you guys are, please hit that like button. It would mean so much to us. Just gets, gets our, uh, our message out there um, about our coins, but also just the community that we're creating. We're so thankful for everybody that comments their thoughts. Please do that now if you guys can, uh, and subscribe if you're new. We just hit 2,000 subscribers a few videos back, and we've been booming all the way to 3,000, and I'm very excited about that, but let's get back to showing you guys some coins. This is the 1835 cap bus dime. Uh, we're going back to the originality here on the coin. It has been through, through a little bit. I think there's some old cleaning on it, but it was really filled in nicely, and the circulation is just even on this coin, but... Super sweet piece. Uh, I love, so my favorite quarters really are the seated quarters, but they have to have arrows and rays on them. This one has arrows and rays, and we're going, you know, we have some originality still here sitting around the stars. No cleaning that I can see. And then just look at this reverse. Oh my gosh. Just wow. I mean, you can't get much better than this. I mean, Dickie pulled out the greatest, the greatest raw stuff for us. Kind of like how Trent picks out stuff for us as well. I mean, these guys know what they're doing. Great coin dealers. And they have really just awesome personalities. I've been buying a little bit of Walkers, but they've kind of been in the 30s just because they're a little bit of a tougher date. This is a 1939S. Walking Liberty Half. I would grade this one a 63, maybe a 62. Just because it has a lot of chatter in the fields. But the luster is still on point and pretty strong on the coin. You know, super stunning piece. Another one that would be great in a, in a BU album. Those are pretty hard to come by though and pretty hard to set up. So but when you can find decent coins like this, you know, 38, 38D, 39S, that's what I try to aim for. Just because they're just not everyday raw coins. Here's an 1854 seated half. Sitting down there with the arrows. This one has a little bit of old cleaning on as you can see. But most of these prices will be competitive just based on the net grade that I would give it personally. But as you can see, there's no rim dings, no huge scratches or distracting parts on the coin. And that's kind of what you want to look for on every piece. If you can get one that just is nice, uh, interesting, and wholesome. And you can kind of see a little bit of cleaning there to the left of her. But I like the coin a lot. I can't pass up coins that have seated, you know, kind of arrows and rays are pretty tough to come by. Another one with arrows and rays. Speaking of the devil, this is a 1853 seated quarter. And going back, I mean, I think this one isn't as original as the others, but still a pretty unique piece. And, I mean, I think these are pulled maybe out of the same album or something, but just look at this reverse on this coin. I mean, wow. I wish I could keep stuff like this, but I just can't. But it's just super cool to see interesting pieces. And I don't, I don't get to buy them too often. The last ones that we actually bought like this were came right out of Trent's personal set. So a lot of these are super coveted. Or they're just sitting in old inventory. Like Dickie only goes to one show uh, once in a while. So, I'm sorry. Pulling out coins like this just haven't been offered to people in six months to a year. So, that's just something for you guys to be considered of. If you guys are going to check out our website, AcousticCollectibles.com. I'm going to pull these over real quick. 1852, 1856, and 1853 large scent. The thing these all have in common is they have a nice chocolate appearance on them. This one has a little bit like a, of a gouge, if I can see that right. But a lot of them just have a better look to them. You don't want one that's all washed out and uh, maybe has had some solution poured on it. That's just something we don't want to pick up. But stuff like this is, is cherry picking all day long. It's the definition of it. Pull out your dictionary. 
Okay, and we've been pulling uh, a lot of early date walkers, 1916, 17, and 18. This one's a 1918 Denver. Probably a VF coin, and you know, it has a little bit of spotting on the reverse here, but still a pretty unique piece. And wanted to pick up another Indian head scent that was raw. I think this one is like an XF example, but you can see that chocolate on the coin. Uh, pretty strong example in terms of its eye appeal. We actually bought a lot of these at the Houston show that were graded, you know, AU, XF, and you guys have been really enjoying those. So thank you so much for all the support you guys have been giving us, especially with the Indian head scents, just a new area for us. Here's a 1927 Standing Liberty Quarter. I would say this one still has a shot at being BU or AU58, just on the edge there, as you can see, but there is a lot of kind of, there are a few hairlines underneath this uh, eagle to the left there. So that's something that we have to make a mark of on the website just for you guys to know. Still a pretty strong coin. This uh, is an 1853O, which I don't see many 1853Os. This one didn't have as much eye appeal on the obverse. But when you flip over the coin, it still has a pretty unique looking reverse here. And I love that O with the rays. Just, I mean, the, the reverses on all these rays are pretty cool. I just wish I one day I'm going to own one that's kind of BU and it has a CAC sticker. And that's kind of something that's on the bucket list for me. Here's a few Barber Dimes, kind of original as you can see. Um, just interesting ones for the set. If you guys want to see more pictures of this, we have some on our online coin shop. Actually, a lot of you guys have been uh, hitting us up on there. We've been pretty thankful to have some dialogue as well. Here are two three cent pieces. I mean, I can't find any of these in holders that are even affordable. So I've been buying a lot of, that have been just good looking coins. 1857 three cent silver flip over that coin and no real problems with it no rim dings no scratches you know the common stuff that we're trying to look for on you know better date raw stuff for you 1853 three cent silver a few little spots on the coin but still nice wholesome example and i love how people try to assemble sets of these because you know you're just trying to find a nice choice one and the last raw coin that we want to show you guys in today's video is a 1930 SLQ. Bought that one just right after the 1927 that we showed you. I would say this one is AU as well. Um, and has a few kind of lines underneath uh, the eagle. But that just kind of might be a little bit of circulation. But thank you guys for taking a look at these raw coins. Let's show you guys some graded pieces. Very quickly, I wanted to show you guys a few more raw coins here. Um, just a few kind of circulating mercury dimes with some color. Wanted to wish uh, one of our, uh, you know, one of our very good clients. His daughter's turning nine years old. Her name is Charlie. Wanted to wish Charlie a happy ninth birthday. Um, we're gonna send these ones out to you, just because we're so thankful that you guys, uh, you know, are a part of our lives and just uh, feed into us daily and give us just so much inspiration. And so happy birthday, Charlie. And I hope you enjoy these Mercury dimes. Alrighty, so on to the holder coins. Wanted to show you guys our newest addition to the white label set, 1884 Carson City, with the CAC sticker has some rim toning as well. And uh, you know, we we're, we're trying to get every denomination in a white label. That's nearly impossible. But if you actually start to look, hunt really hard, and ask many questions, sometimes you'll find coins that you didn't expect. Bought this one. Um, for a little bit more than we what we normally do. We try to get them super cheap, but we just couldn't pass up this one, especially when, where white labels are going. Um, if you guys don't know what white labels are, white labels are basically just the background here. Um, it, it's all white, and this is actually a really old NGC holder. And so if you guys wanna know more about labels, we have a video down below to show you guys a little bit of information about them. And we'll talk a little bit briefly about these two. Pick this one up in Bossier City for $130. Pick this one up at um, the Tyler show last year for $50. So our white label set is looking really cool. Very happy about that. Now let's talk about some coins we got from Dickey here. This is a 1947 Denver Walking Liberty half. Has kind of a darkness to the obverse here, but the reason why I bought it is because it has some color on the reverse. Kind of like an iridescent purple to it. And it has a rainbow kind of hugging the left side of the coin. Pretty hard to show you guys, but I'll try to have more more of better photos on our website acousticcollectibles.com definitely an interesting coin don't see many of these toned very often we have one last video that someone bought out pretty quickly and we're very thankful for that here's an 1854 uh, seated half dollar with arrows had some old cleaning so it was kind of decorated down as you can see 
still has some interesting luster intact there. Um, and, you know, finding one like this, you know, any any kind of AU example on a holder, I just, I can't find them. And it's kind of an affordable price. Um, and the only ones that are really being offered are just so much over retail or they're, pretty, they're BU coins that, you know, many people just can't afford. Here is an 1875 uh, seated half. This one looks pretty nice. I enjoy this one. Has a little bit of old cleaning as you can see around the stars. Um, but I think the coin does have some interesting eye appeal. Nothing too distracting on the coin. Has a little bit of a kind of a bluish toning to it. When you flip it over it has that kind of same story but you can really tell this is a mint state coin. Pretty, uh, pretty piece and I'm very happy to be able to offer this to you guys. We have two Morgan dollars here, an 1883-0 and 1884-0, both in Rattlers. The reason why we bought these is because old holders have been very interesting lately in terms of their collectability. And Dickie offered to uh, us these two at a good price. And we normally aren't trying to buy Morgan dollars that are more common unless they have some pretty uh, something interesting about them. These holders did it for us. Here's one of my favorite, favorite coins of the video. This is an 1825 cap bust half, and you can see there's rainbow kind of rim toning around the whole entire coin, and I really like it a lot. It's graded XF40. I think it has a little bit of old cleaning on the coin, but still pretty cool. Rainbow rim on both sides of it. Man, I, I don't know. I just like this coin a lot. A little bit more of a common date, but that's something that you shouldn't fret over. I still like the coin, and I hope you do too, because, you know, finding coins like this, isn't really uh, common for us, especially with that toning. So let's go take a look at it if you guys have a, a chance. This is an 1898 Barber Half. You know, AU Barber with some kind of interesting eye appeal. You flip over the coin, still looks pretty nice. Pretty decent AU50 for sure. Most of the time when you see AU50, it's going to start to get that little darkness and toning and everything. Um, we bought a little bit more of kind of uh, more affordable stuff if someone's trying to assemble a set. 1961 Denver, 1963 Franklin halves. Um, you know, nothing bad about the coins, just common dates and something to fill a set with. And we bought a lot of 1842S uh, Walking Liberty halves, great AU58, all BU, or all BU looking, um, and pretty neat pieces, but nothing to really, like, you know, have commentary over. Um, but here are the big kahunas of the video, all three right here. We actually bought some gold, which is pretty interesting. We normally don't buy gold. This is a 19, I'm sorry, 2016 W uh, first strike, and it's actually a special proof mercury dime. It is gold, and we had a client that was looking for this coin, and he ended up, we ended up actually picking it up for him this weekend. He said, hey, can you keep an eye out? And then Dickie pulled all the, uh, the gold out for us, and this one was one of the first ones I pulled out. And so, pretty interesting piece. And uh, we really are thankful for Richard's support, and we hope you enjoy this one, sir, for your set. This is an 1847-0 uh, $10 gold lid. We don't buy, like I said, we don't buy gold too often, but this one was kind of interesting. I like the New Orleans mint kind of design, or kind of, you know, having that mint mark. And the date's pretty interesting. That's literally all I said about the coin, and Dickie offered us a fair price for it, so we ended up picking it up. And it sold pretty quick this weekend already. But I don't know. I just like how they put the, the mint mark on gold coins here. I like the New Orleans O. And I hope you guys do too. Here's probably one of our biggest pickups of the weekend. This is a 1907 $20 gold to Saint. And it's great. MS64 Plus by PCGS. And an old kind of blue label holder with the first ever trivies. If you guys look up these trivies, they're complete poo poo. They're bad. But. Someone didn't like the CAC sticker on it, was trying to pull it off, but they can get re-stickered for a pretty cheap price. But overall, the coin is just, I mean, it's pretty fantastic. Might even be a 65 today, but uh, someone ended up scooping this up from us pretty quick this weekend. But we'll try to get more gold in for you guys pretty soon. Just a pretty strong coin, and I really do enjoy it a lot. For the last two coins of the video, we're going to end it off with some commemoratives. This is a 1925 stone mountain um, there's a lot of luster on the coin a little bit of that kind of dark spot in the top left there isn't very attractive but still pretty strong reverse as you can see really nice cartwheel 
And you can't go wrong with the best state in the nation. Sorry guys, this is a 1938 Denver. Texas commemorative grade MS66 by NGC. A little bit of a tougher date. Has some strong luster, a few spots on the coin, but still a pretty cool coin. And I like the just the design of it. Pretty busy, and I really do enjoy it. But thank you guys for taking a look at all these coins today. We hope you enjoyed it. Now let's roll to the outro. Thank you guys for watching today's video. If you guys did enjoy today's video, please leave a like. It really helps us out. It reaches more numismatists. We just want to create a community where everyone can come together and enjoy some coins. Subscribe if you're new and uh, comment down below. We'd love to know what you think of the coins, what you think of the episode. We really want your feedback. But until next time, we will see you guys in the next one.